Good morning, piggies. We're actually out because it's not hot yet. Squash and apples for breakfast. Good morning, I wanted to bring you to the garden today and uh, give you the history of my garden here um, at our homestead. Um, one thing I wanted to start with is talking about uh, something that one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Jessica from Roots and Refuge Farm, um, talked about just a couple days ago was uh, understanding your desire for gardening and what you can actually do in your life stage um, and it, it's been a struggle this year with children basically I am number one I am mom and gardening is you know I, I want it to provide food for us but honestly it is a hobby um, so I have an 18 month old and a five-year-old and the five-year-old is pretty awesome he he's fairly easy um, the 18 month old <laughs> he's a little bit wild and likes to run off and do whatever he wants so I have to realize this year that some things have to be let go and you know, I am definitely growing food there's lots of food being produced in this garden um, and I'm happy with that but it is not 100% of our food um, on the contrary we definitely grow all of our own meat so pork, beef, chicken, turkey, we don't buy meat, um, which is fantastic. We love that. And we, like I said, we just sent the cows to butcher in a couple weeks. We'll be able to go and pick that up and I'll be able to show you that. But let's talk about the garden. I uh, moved into a house not even like realizing the difference, the difference that you can have in dirt. I grew up in what is called the Skagit Valley and it is fantastic silt based dirt that is fantastic from the rivers um, and it, it's so easy to grow in. It, the amendments are so minimal it's ridiculous. So I never even had to worry about amending a garden ever before and in the last three years I <laughs> basically had to choose how to do a garden because our dirt is basically rock, gravel, clay, just not acceptable for growing. It literally won't grow anything. It's also filled with iron, um, which we've struggled with with our water. Um, we now have a filter system that uses a media and no salt, which is fantastic. Um, and it is completely balanced, minimal iron, it's amazing. Uh, I'll have to have my husband tell you more about that someday. Um, but him and the neighbor put it together instead of hiring a company. Um, but yeah, so many things that we've, I've struggled with here. <laughs> the garden is my thing. My husband really has nothing to do with it. He, he does many other fantastic things here. Um, the garden is not one of them and I, I don't know. <laughs> want to let him touch anything in the garden. This is my garden. I know how it works. Don't touch my stuff. Uh, so what I started with was basically a horse pasture um, full of weeds and grass and I tried growing in it. Nothing happened and I started learning about other methods of starting garden. Sorry, it is hot today and I sweat a lot. That's just, that's just me. I'm fine. It's just hot. I don't like it. I'm from Western Washington. Like 75 is my max for temperature. <laughs> um, so one thing that really interested me was the back to Eden style method, which originates here in Washington out on the peninsula, uh, right behind the Olympic mountain range. So they have a huge, um, Oh gosh, the word is escaping me. The, the mountains basically block 
all of the rain that comes from the west side of the mountains, which is a rainforest. The west side of the mountains is a rainforest, and in Squim, where the Back to Eden method was originated, um, they have a huge rain shadow. That, that's the word I'm trying to talk about. Um, so they get very, very, very little rain in that specific microclimate there. Um, and so Back to Eden basically uses wood chips, a very, very thick layer of wood chips with compost underneath um, and like some sort of weed barrier that decomposes. So a lot of people use cardboard, newspaper, that type of thing, compost, and then a large layer of um, wood chips, probably at least a foot, if not more. Well, okay, I guess they say six inches. I went with more because it is so bad here that I literally had nothing underneath that would work as good soil to grow in. So I knew that I had to have more. Um, I ended up seeing one of the, I think it's the public utility service that deals with um, cutting trees down for the power lines and whatever. And um, they give their wood chips away for free. And they were working right here in our local area. And they ended up delivering about 11 loads of wood chips for me, which was fantastic. The only problem with that is that I haven't seen them again, so I'm kind of sad. I really have a lot more area that I want to cover, like way more than double what I have right now. <laughs> so eventually they'll come back to this area. This might take some time. Um, so I, my husband did help with this part of the garden. He did uh, use the tractor and spread the wood chips. And then after that, I, well, I was super pregnant with the 18 month old. So yeah, I guess this garden's about 18 months old. You could say that. Um, well, a little bit more because it was about a month before he was born. So 19, 20 months old is the garden. <laughs> I was super pregnant with him. It was cold. It was January. I made beds just like I kind of hollowed out not very deep like three four inches deep in the wood chips beds of I don't even remember what size they're two feet wide two and a half I'm not sure and they vary and they work fine for me I wasn't very specific on that 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 is a personal preference thing, I think, on, on bed space. Um, and then I put compost in the areas that I had hollowed out for the beds. So I did not do compost on the bottom, and I did not do a weed block because I did not have anything that was big enough. This is a huge, huge garden. I don't know the footage. I can probably maybe... Uh, I don't know how to measure it because I don't think we have a measuring tape this big. It might take me a, a quick minute to figure that out. Um, so I did not do compost. I did not do a weed block. I used the wood chips as my wood block because it was winter and most of the weeds were dead already. So they did not have a chance to sprout or anything with sun and then they were piled on top with at least a foot some some spots were a little bit thicker with wood chips um, and so that completely eliminated the weed problem from underneath you always have if you have yard around you're gonna have weed seed blowing in and I, I do have that pressure in fact we have trees and a, and a particular neighbor tree I think it's an alder the seeds blow in and the dang things, they are ridiculously abundant when they come up. It just like, it looks white in here. It's, there's nothing I can do about it. I just have to pull the weeds. And fortunately, they're really, really easy to pull when they're small. Once they get established though, the roots become like a tree and they, they hold on. So you gotta get them out fast. Um, anyways, so I've created this garden and I decided to go with this method because bringing in large amounts of dirt um, and doing raised beds and the, the building the structures for the raised beds, there's just too much 
it's too big to do that in a way that I felt was good for our budget. I, I, I didn't think that. So to make it the size that I wanted it, I had to work around that and I did the wood chips and the compost and the compost was still quite a bit of an expense. Things are expensive in Western Washington. Um, gosh, I would guess if you found good organic dirt, it would probably $25, $30 a yard. I, I, there's no way, no way I could possibly do what I wanted to do at $25, $30 a yard for dirt. No way. So this is fantastic. And now I'm working on making my own compost to amend these beds. Um, and that's important because the wood chips are still breaking down. So I really don't have, I have that compost that I originally put in and I have composted some of the beds. Um, but I definitely need to build more soil up um, while the wood chips are still decomposing underneath and once they do, once the wood chips do completely decompose, that is going to be some fantastic dirt below. Um, but it takes time, it takes a lot of time um, and I really wanted to get growing right away. So some people with the Back to Eden method let it sit for two to three years before they start trying to plant in it and I just, that was not what I wanted to do. So that's why I had to kind of go off and do the compost thing and um, use that. And now I have to continue to build the compost up because I, I definitely have some deficiencies and I've used some organic um, fertilizer to help with that. Um, but really honestly, when I've made my own compost from, I have a ton of chicken shavings. Um, the, the, yeah, you know, chicken poo is hot, so you have to compost it, so it's kind of unfortunate. I have to do it properly, and again, that's hard with children because I forget about things. Um, too many little things, and they, they, things get forgot, so it ends up taking a long time for me to compost the chicken poo properly to where I feel that it's okay to put it on my beds and not burn plants and also not be toxic if it gets on lettuce or something. Um, e. Coli, e. coli or anything, salmonella, uh, mostly E. coli could happen if you don't compost it properly and it gets on the food and you don't wash it properly or cook it properly. Um, so being careful with that is taking me time to get compost to amend the beds with. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely dealing with some deficiencies that are creating not fantastic growing conditions and some of the food is like my, my kale should be huge um, the <laughs> the corn is terrible <laughs> the corn is horrible um, my rhubarb which seems like it should be something that should be super easy to grow but it's not happy it definitely needs more um, what else I, I, I already amended the cucumber plants and they're pretty happy but we had a cool cool late spring summer which is um, when I really needed some good plant growth in the cucumbers but you know honestly I've <laughs> I've well specifically off of this one type of cucumber it's an expedition and is it it's from Osborne quality seeds which is in Mount Vernon um, we're in the county, but we're technically Mount Vernon. Um, so we're, it's the same area. Like I said, this is a huge, huge farming community. There's, there's multiple seed companies. There's a super fantastic flower company called Florette, um, who does seeds. And, uh, yeah, they, I lost my train of thought. So, oh yes, those seeds in particular for those cucumbers, those cucumbers, the Expedition cucumbers, have done fantastic and amazing. I have done some other, um, like, just eating cucumbers. I don't know what to call them, honestly. Uh, and they're, they're not nearly as happy. <laughs> but they were last year. They were happy last year. And I think it's because we had much more heat last year. Uh, yeah. So...
I, I'm excited about what we've been growing. You can see the gourds behind me. I did amend that bed, so they're happy. They're going nutty. I have a small obsession with pumpkins. Not small. I, I love pumpkins a lot. Um, and in the future, when the young one is more manageable and doesn't just run off and do dangerous things, um, I plan to grow more giant pumpkins. Again, they are in the beds where I have not been able to amend. Um, so hopefully in the future I can get more wood chips and compost and do that. But, you know, it's kind of a touch and go thing. I, it, it's fun, but I know that I'm not going to get to a thousand pounds and definitely not to two thousand pounds like some of these fantastic growers out there. Um, but it's still fun. We still get very large pumpkins. Last year, my pumpkin was 424 pounds. So my next goal is 500 pound pumpkin. It's crazy. And then of course I'm growing a ton of other little pumpkins, which really aren't doing that well because they're in that crappy dirt, but they're growing, so cool. All right, I think it's time. I'm gonna give you a more in-depth tour of this main garden. Right at the front of the garden I wanted to put some dahlias. I love the dahlias. And they're super happy. They're one thing that is super, super happy. I never even put compost in here. I only put wood chips. And also last year, I forgot and ran out of time and left the bulbs in. And look at them. They're super happy. Although this year, I think I am going to dig them and uh, split the tubers and expand. These ones down at the end were new this year. Oh, and another thing I didn't touch on. So right now, our property, because it is sand, clay, rock, oh gosh, just horrible stuff, is super hard and dense and just compact. Let's go over there. Um, in the winter, this area turns into a bog. It is just, it's just waterlogged. It's horrible. It's soaked. It's just standing water everywhere. Um, we are working on drainage. We did our main yard um, first. And we, we did another drain last year and it has helped um, out through here. All the way starting back behind me and then going all the way out to the very back corner and it dumps out back there and it has helped. Um, but before, like specifically right here, this was literally standing water all the way until May, June. I think this year it was all the way until June because it was so cool this year. It wasn't necessarily super rainy. It just was cool. Um, the wood chips... Even when this was like standing water, this wasn't even boggy. That is another super fantastic thing. And another reason I went with Back to Eden is because the wood chips soak up the water and it has helped so much, so, so much with our standing water issues. Also, we're adding some willow trees, some uh, weeping willows. So this one's in the pot because it's, well, I can't dig the dirt out back because it is too hard right now. And also I don't have a way to get water out there to water it. So I don't want to plant it yet. So it's just chilling in the pot. Anyways, back to the garden tour. Oh, and also another side note. Um, speaking of things that the children love, the strawberries. I, I'm growing strawberries and berries and whatever. And I really honestly don't expect <laughs> to ever really get any sort of harvest off of them that will make it out of the garden. Um, <laughs> I think I brought like five strawberries up to the house and then I ended up eating them right away this year. <laughs> Otherwise the children just come in here and eat them. And that's what they're for. That, that's their treat. They get to have sugar through strawberries. And uh, they are not here today because they are with Grandma and Grandpa. My parents are retired, and about once a week, they'll take the boys all day, 
which is so fantastic and super helpful for me. Um, there are certain things that I just can't get done with them. And uh, shooting a 15 minute video trying to tell you about the garden is something I knew that I would just get interrupted and wouldn't work. Uh, this is a fun experiment. This is a hearty lemon. I don't think it's very happy. What is it called? Yep. From One Green World. Um, I think this year I will build it a little greenhouse. But it's kind of cool. I'm excited to see if in the future it does more. The only thing I didn't realize when I was ordering it is it has super pokies on it. Um, which when you have children running around in your garden, it makes me a little bit nervous. But so far it's very small still. Um, it hasn't been a problem. So I grew a lot of beans this year. A lot. Um, these ones right here are their drying bean. And I kind of lost track of where my green beans were versus my drying beans and honestly they've all kind of gotten to the point where they're not <laughs> no the green the things that look like they might be the green beans are not tasty um so i just i'm letting them go and i'm going to let them all dry every single one of them and um when i open them up i'll be able to match them to the packets of dry beans that i've bought so i'll know which one is which at that point um well these ones uh, i forget the name of them it's like I, I don't know i'll have to show you packets later um but i'm excited to try drying beans i've literally never done that before so it'll, it'll be interesting oh this one so i can tell this is a black turtle bean yeah and then these ones, I think that you'll be able to see if I pop one open. Oh yeah, they're so cool. They're, I mean, the pod is cool, but look at that. That's so cool. I'm really excited to try these as drying beans. There's, and then there's these ones. <laughs> they look like green beans, but they're some sort of drying bean. And I know for a fact, because I tried to pop one open the other day, they're not real obvious. And one of the drying beans is, um, is, it's just white. So <laughs> it might be that one. It's just kind of boring looking, but these, I remember the name of these. These are pink and they're called slippery silks. And I'm super excited to see them because they're pink beans and who doesn't want to grow something pink or purple. My favorite color is purple. And I am one of those purple people who really likes purple and everything's purple. Pink is good too, and green is, I, I would have to say that green and purple are my two favorite colors, and green is significant because garden, green, I love plants, love plants. Um, this is my lettuce bed, um, a lot of it went to seed because it was pretty warm, um, end of July and August, well July wasn't that warm, but. August got pretty warm. Um, there's still a few things left. And then there's a few things that have sprouted. I think those are Salanova. And then that is a Pak Choi, which only one sprouted from sowing. And then I sowed a bunch more in here and I'm not sure that it's going to sprout, which I'm kind of sad. Maybe it will. Oh. That did, and that's spinach, so that's exciting. Fall spinach might work better. Um, one thing I read this year, and I, I'm not... Well, I think it did work. So, I put the lettuce behind the beans so that they would kind of shadow it, but I'm not sure it was enough, especially towards the end of the day. So I put this shade cloth over the lettuce. There is a theory that possibly lettuce doesn't necessarily bolt because of heat 
but it may bolt because of long hours of exposure to sun. So if you, you know, put shade cloth on it, maybe possibly it won't bolt as fast. Uh, it's a theory, and I think maybe it did slow the bolting process. I, I don't know. It was a good experiment, but I think now it's time to take it off so that the lettuce can sprout better um, and get more because we, oh gosh, it happens so quickly. We get super, super long days, and of course, end of June is like 10, 10 30 at night, the sun sets. And because we're pretty far north, we're almost to the Canadian border. So, yeah, and then in the morning it comes up at 3.34 in the morning the sun comes up. So we have super long hours of light in June and July. Um, and then now, already, just the beginning of September, the sun sets about 7.45. So it is a huge swing so now we have a lot less light and uh, I haven't paid attention to when the sun is coming up because I've been sleeping a lot recently, which is fantastic. <laughs> uh, wasn't getting that in previous months due to young, young child. Um, anyway, so we did have a pretty fantastic summer for tomatoes in the greenhouse. I start tomatoes inside in February. All of these plants are what I grew from seed. Um, and really, honestly, I did not prune any of my outside tomatoes this year. I, it was another thing I just kind of had to give up on. I did more pruning on the greenhouse tomatoes. And recently, I <laughs> it gets too hot in there for me to hang out in there anyways. But I kind of gave up on them. So anyways, these are kind of petering out. I do have a ton of green tomatoes. Some weeds. Yeah, I mean, look, there's there's a ton of green tomatoes. So I'm watching the nighttime temperatures. This week is hot, and then I think next week we kind of level out to mid-70s, and then after that it looks like we go down to the 60s, and I didn't look at the lows, but they're getting down in the 40s next week. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> Ah, the peppers. This was this was a sad story this year. So I amended this bed as well, so they're a little bit happier than some of the other plants. And they are growing well, and they are just to the point where they're starting to be ripe, and it's a little bit late. Um, because I also start these indoors in February, and I set them out too early. I got too anxious and I set them out too early and a very light frost came through and completely killed them. So I had to restart. And I'm talking about being two months late. So that was really sad <laughs> and I learned my lesson. So I'm going to start the peppers one month after the tomatoes because the problem was this year that they got too big to be in the house and then I moved them to the greenhouse and they were too big for that like they needed to come outside and be planted so if I start them a month later I think I might be okay next year we'll see we'll see oh funny story I didn't even notice this I don't know where this came from my compost bin apparently that is a tomato that started itself that's hilarious and I attempted to regrow um eggplants. I think I should plant those. I, I think I should start the seeds the same time as tomatoes. This one does have, oh it's hard to see. It does have a flower. What's in there? No. Yeah, there's no, I, they're not going to fruit. But hey, I tried. I only made three of those plants. But I got all sorts of peppers in here. Some of them are ready and I do need to do some harvesting. Um, it's another thing that I have a hard time doing with the boys because they, uh, <laughs> you know, oh, I want to try it. Oh, I want to try it. Oh, I want to try it. And then also when they're picking, they tend to break things and that's a little frustrating for me. You know, I put a lot of effort into growing them and then they break the plants, kill them, break the vegetables. It's difficult. 
but it's not you can do it it's it is difficult but you can do it <laughs> i'm also super excited about these these are sugar rush peach uh peppers and uh my favorite youtuber again jessica from roots and Refu refuge um really really likes the uh sugar rush peach and i want to try them I tried one the other day and they're definitely not ripe. They don't have any sweetness yet. So I'm hoping with this last week of heat and like maybe another week, maybe po possibly we'll get some to ripen up. If not, I'm just going to harvest them and pickle them. They'll be fun. We got some jalapenos going on over here. So these, these are definitely like more of a hobby thing. Although I do have some sweet peppers and they're tiny because again late and not warm but you know peppers are kind of a hobby I, I do make salsas I love salsa been making a ton of salsa it's fantastic got an onion bed I also did some companion planting with onions um, there's one here it's kind of a weak example but yeah well this is a better example I, I use this one these ones as uh, companion plants to hopefully ward off, I don't know, something. <laughs> pests. I haven't really had too much pest pressure, except for this cabbage. Cabbage got kind of chewed on this year. And the tomatillo, I think that was, I don't know, I'm not real interested. I don't really care about the tomatillo. This is a, a squash bed. Again, I also love squash. I don't just love pumpkins, I love squash. So I've got all sorts of different types. Um, and it was cool this summer. Pumpkin squash, they like heat as well. Um, there's not a ton in here. And I don't know that they will make a ton. But there, there's definitely some pumpkins. And here's a little baby uh, butternut squash. Still green. Um, yeah, another butternut. What's this? Oh, these are acorn squash. I'll definitely have some acorn squash. My mom requested that I grow those because she really loves them. Yeah, actually, there's plenty of acorn squash in here. Um, what is this? Oh, I forgot the name of those. Uh, I forgot the name of those. Um, I'll think of it later. Now we start to get into the fun stuff. These are just little jackby little pumpkins. You know, decorative little fun things. <laughs> That's hard to see. Something about these curly cues. I, I just, pumpkins make me happy. This is Walter's garden. And we did have some things growing in here. Now we just basically have a beet. I shouldn't say we. I gave him seeds and planted. He planted them, and he also played in here with trucks. And <laughs> I think most things got run over and killed. <laughs> um, volunteer potatoes that I really haven't put any effort into. I don't know. Maybe someday I'll do potatoes, like seriously, but and eh, not into it right now. Um, corn. Some of this eh, makes some decent ears. That one looks like it could almost be ready. Well, those are ready. Um, so I should probably pick those. We'll see what they taste like. But, like, <laughs> it's pretty small still. Not going to do much there. And then this, I don't know what seed I use, but this sucks. Maybe I'll make baby corns. They seem to be ready. Just bust some open and, like... <laughs> make some baby corn I guess do something with it rather than nothing maybe use the stalks as like cute little decor we'll see because I, I love everything fall and I am not your basic bitch when it comes to pumpkins I swear I am all about them I am queen of pumpkins <laughs> hopefully someday we'll see um, this is my Brussels sprouts, 
And I amended this bed too, and it definitely gets watered plenty. It's not super happy. I also planted some cauliflowers over here. I, I honestly, the brassicas just didn't do well this year, which is weird because it was cooler this year. And they should have enjoyed that. Yeah, there's there's my biggest head of cauliflower I got. <clears throat> well, I tried, and maybe I'll do more research this winter. <laughs> figure that out. Mm, more companion planting to ward off the bugs. And it seems to have done well. I have very low bug pressure in here this year. Last year was horrid for black aphids. Like, just lining the stalks. And, oh, the black aphids were horrible. Especially on my kale. That was a sad story. And then this year I haven't seen any. I, I, maybe that's a cool summer thing too. I don't know. Um, I'm still learning. I'm still learning a lot. Um, beets. Oh, there's a couple that are going to seed. Some radishes that went to seed. And then I have some radishes that are making it. They're on the far side, so they're shaded most of the day. Um, this is where I accidentally dropped a packet of carrot seeds. Letting them get a little bit bigger. We'll see how they grow, but they're in the path. And it is way too compact for carrots to be happy to grow a good root but I'm just gonna leave them there because why not who cares I like to experiment whatever we just recently put some more carrot seed in um, these ones some of them are getting close to harvest we've definitely harvested plenty of carrots this year it's been delicious um, this is my asparagus bed and Gosh, so it's only, what, a, a year and a half old. So asparagus can live long, 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 long time. This will eventually be fantastic asparagus. And maybe this one, this one probably could have been harvested this year. It's a good size. Well, it's kind of small. <laughs> but most of it's pretty small, so I just let it go. And I should have chopped it down by now, um, but I haven't. Um, these are from the trees that I was telling you about. I'm pretty sure those are alder. The white little fuzzies that come blow in, they leave these. So as you can see, they pull out pretty easily. But there's a ridiculous amount of them. And it's just a bed that I haven't paid attention to this year because it's not really producing food, so it hasn't been a priority. But I will definitely do it soon because some of these are getting big and they're going to be difficult to pull. Um... Yeah, this, I've never, I, nobody talks about growing celery in their gardens. I, I don't, I don't know why. I found out this last winter because I use a ton of celery, like soups, all sorts of stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. So I did and it's good and they're watered plenty, but they're fairly thin. So I think I have more to learn about celery. Uh, it has fantastic flavor. So I've definitely been chopping it and using it in soups. And then someone suggested drying, you know, the rest of whatever you don't use to put in the soup. And, uh, well, I used my blender and made it into a powder. So took completely dried it, made it into a powder and added salt. And now I made my own celery salt. It was really easy, like really, really easy. So I've got those. I have leeks that are almost ready. I don't know. I have to... I'm going to say that they're ready. Just I think this would be a sign that they're probably ready. Um, but I need to look that up. But I'm excited to use the leeks. I have a bunch. I've definitely eaten a lot. We, not I, we have eaten a lot of the green onions. And then I have some more coming. They've been unsuccessful with dill this year. It's been at this stage for quite a while. I don't know. It's just not getting enough sun in here or what. But I didn't have success with it in my other area where it should have gotten plenty of light. I don't know. Um, 
Like I said, my rhubarb is super unhappy. I don't know why. I really, I don't. Maybe because I didn't trim it enough? I'm not sure. So, I need to work on that. Oh, goodness. So, we have a local firefighter helicopter. You can't even see it because it's so low. There's a lake down here. We're up on a ridge above a lake. And they just, oh, kind of saw it through the, no, nope, you didn't see it. Anyways, they just buzzed the lake. That's kind of fun. We actually get a ton of um, air traffic here and yesterday and today we have had very, very little. Um, the local, air, uh, well, it's a Navy base and they also have Air Force there, but they uh, fly darn low over our house, the jets do. So we're constantly waving at the jets from the Air Force and Navy base on Woodby Island. Um, yeah, my artichokes, these ones dried out. I wonder if I can harvest seed from that. I don't know. I never thought about that. Uh, uh, something that's on my radar to start doing and thinking about. Um, like obviously I'm doing it with the beans this year, but I plan to eat most of those, but I think I'll save some of the seeds too. But seed saving is on my radar now. Um, they say this year when people go to buy seeds, there's going to be a huge seed shortage because of COVID-19 and people doing what they coined as, well not coined, it was coined many, 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 many years ago, but decades ago, but victory gardens <laughs> this year for 2020 and now next year, 2021, uh, seed shortage and even seed shortage for this fall growing season has been a thing. So, uh, yeah, maybe I'll find out if I can save. That's not what the artichoke seeds look like. I know what they look like, but see if I can save seed from in there somewhere. Check it out. Um, I grew some fantastic snap, uh, not snap peas. What are they like? Sweet sugar peas this year. And then I pulled them out and restarted them. This is the second time I've restarted them because these stinkers who are right next door are doing a fantastic job of eating slugs and snails, but they have come in here the first time I replanted the peas and the next day I came out and I saw they make these little holes. They basically go with their little beaks and they ate all the dang peas I planted. Oh, I was pissed. They don't always get in here, but when they do, this is why I don't let them in the garden. <laughs> They're mad at me now. Call ducks are loud, by the way. I love them, but they're loud. <laughs> so anyways, I've got peas restarted. Another strawberry project. And here's the inside of the tunnel with the gourds. It's real fun to look at. And the inside. There's a local pumpkin patch that I just adore. They do fantastic work. Um, Gordon Skagit Farms. And they, at one point, did a gourd tunnel. And the whole, th it was huge. It was super long. I think it was about the same height, but the whole dang thing, like, probably 30 feet worth of tunnel that they did was just hung with gourds. And that was fantastic. <laughs> uh, so, of course, copycat, but whatever. Makes me happy. Cucumbers. This is one of the muncher cucumbers. I've gotten about two of those this year. So, sorry. Sun is difficult at the moment. I can't get my phone to focus on it very well. Yeah, anyways, it's doing fantastic. This is kind of, I think it's called a suyo long. It is taking forever to ripen, which is interesting. I have a feeling it might not taste real fantastic, but we'll see. And then all these things, cute little things. I'm so excited. Another thing for Roots in the Refuge that I had to try. Um, yes, I really seriously stalk her. It's true. Um, cucamelons or Mexican sour gherkin. They're so dang cute and they're delicious. They taste like a lemony cucumber. I um, Most of them have been eaten, but I was able to save enough that 
I pickled a handful of them. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for the pickling to, you know, I I'm trying to make myself wait to open the jar. But I just did it last week and I don't want to open it yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I really, I need to, sorry, the light is quite bright now. I'm on the other side. I need to come in here and harvest cucumbers. I think this will be about the fifth harvest I've done. Um, and I might be a day late on some of them here. But these, these are the expedition cucumbers. And they're, like I said, they're super happy. And they're doing very well. Um, and they're delicious. And some companion planting calendula. Yep. Marigolds with my... Well, I had chard. It seems to have gone to seed. Well, I, I still have a couple plants that didn't go to seed. And my kale. It's doing okay. It's not doing fantastic, but it's doing okay. This is blood sorrel. Sorrel? I'm not completely sure how to say that word, but that with these fantastic weeds. <laughs> um, I don't love that. I tried it out this year, and I don't love it. But they say it'll last. It's a perennial, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Kale has been fantastic. We've been eating that. What, what did I miss? I think I got it all. I missed this one. My herb bed. So as you can see, a lot of it's flowering. This is oregano. Oh, let me tell you about bees for a minute. I do not plan on doing an apiary or keeping bees at all. I have always oh, got a ton of pollen on him. That's awesome. Because we have a local um, bee company. Bee, I, I don't know what to call them. Anyways, they, I think it's like 200 or more hives right at an adjacent property from here. And we're only five acres, so it's it's very close. Like a quarter mile away, there's like 200 hives. I, I don't, I will buy his, I do buy his honey, um, Bruce Bowen bees. And I have no desire to start another hobby. I can't, there's no way. And there's no reason to because his bees come down here. So I just go buy his honey because I figure it's kind of like my honey too anyways. And I didn't have to do the work, so I'll pay for it. That's cool with me. <laughs> Anyways, the oregano is wildly in bloom. We've got some parsley. And some Thai basil, which is beautiful blooming as well. I got some thyme. There's some little flowers on that. Um, and the sage has taken over. So I'm going to dry a bunch of it. Chop it down and dry a bunch. I tried to grow uh, cilantro in this area and it was, it got beat out by the sage. So I had a little bit of cilantro left, which was really sad because I really do love making salsa and I needed, I needed a lot more cilantro than I got. So that was one thing I had to buy this year was cilantro multiple times. Got some chives going on. And you know, for... The main garden that's about it this is Haas he was one of our first children he's 13 years old now he's been a fantastic duck dog and now he can barely hear and it, it takes him a minute to get around he's just he's just old but he's happy he is also the most fantastic dog Oh, he's so lovey. He super loves. <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah. He has been fantastic with the boys. And when I say fantastic, I mean they crawl all over him and pull on his ears. And he just lets them do it. He doesn't even get up and leave, which I tried to teach him at one point that he could get up and leave if it was too much for him. And he just never did. He just takes it. I think he loves it. <laughs> He's a fantastic doggy. We're gonna miss him. I, I don't know how this winter is going to go for him. It could be 
It could be sad, so. We're just kind of taking it day by day. He's got some joint medicine that he's on and whatnot. And he's a fantastic doggy. And then, on the new end, this is Gator. He's a kitten from um, a friend that has a local farm and kind of was an inspiration to me for getting into uh, uh, breeding chickens. He came from Willow Ridge Farm. Anyways, they're just cute. We, we have a lot of cats to keep the mice away. So one last thing with the garden. Um, these were, you know, sweet pea flowers. Which I also put them at the front of the garden just for, for beauty and fun. But I'm letting them dry so I can harvest the seeds for more flowers next year. They were pretty and smelled fantastic. All right. Oh, I should show you. Hold on, I'll be right back. Well, I showed this one in my introduction video, but I thought I'd show it one more time because it's fun. So this is a giant Atlantic giant pumpkin that was, um, well, basically that is a huge seed saving community. It's, I didn't even think about that that way before. And then I realized that it's like, yeah, anyways, I could go on and on about giant pumpkins. I'll do something about that at another time, a big video about that. Maybe next year when I actually like put effort into it this year I did not can you tell with the weeds so anyways this without putting any effort into it she's pretty big maybe 100 pounds it's not huge it's really not huge like I said last year mine was 424 pounds so this is pretty tiny but it you know for not putting any effort I'm cool with that you know that that's pretty fun. Um, so this is the dirt that is junk and I have amended it. This has been amended, surprisingly. This moon dust junk. Um, but it's still growing some pumpkins. <laughs> this kitten really wants some attention. Probably because the boys are with and grandpa so he's not getting tortured although he seems to love the torture <laughs> so there's some pumpkins growing they're just not fantastic oh and this zucchini I, I grew my uh well crook neck squash and straight neck squash and zucchini in my food forest this year this one got big we were going to take it to the pigs but apparently a child forgot it here so i'll take that to the piggies <laughs> Um, yeah, and then I have, I showed these on my introduction video too, but still. These are some fancier pumpkins, Musk, Musk de Provence, um, Warty Goblin, I can't remember what else. But they seem to be actually happier than the regular jack-o'-lanterns. This might be, I think I did more amending in this bed than some other beds. But yeah, and then there's the... The food forest, and I'll do a whole video on that for you, too. All right. Well, I think it's time for me to sign off and go do some housework. It's getting pretty dang hot out here today. I think they said it possibly could get to 90, but I don't know. This doesn't feel quite like 90 yet. I think today I'm going to uh, do some inside things. I decided to harvest some of these cucumbers and of course I forgot to bring I, I usually use like reusable grocery bags to come down here and do harvest with and I completely didn't even think about it I forgot so just trying to figure out oh what do I take these up in how about the box from the box fort that my child was making <laughs> yeah kids save me I guess Last little tip here for you for gardening. Um, auto water all the way. Auto water, I, it really has saved my life. I have auto water for the chicken coop. I have auto water for the pigs. Auto water for the cows. Um, and the garden. This is fantastic. Um, there, this 
oh there's so many settings so many settings you can do four hoses on this one which actually isn't enough i've been having to do some hand watering of the other regular jack-o-lantern pumpkins but um oh these are worth the money they're like 55 60 bucks um there's different brands this one seems to work for me just fine um, except you have to be careful this part right here shears off very easily so you can't put pressure on the hoses this will shear off very easily um, and I've somehow done it to two which is depressing but uh, you know I just they're worth it so I replaced them tons of time and energy saved by auto watering um, I wish I could do watering like a, a drip system I haven't been able to figure that out yet or take the time to do that um, so for now I have two of these in the main garden you can see I have posts that they're on and then I have just oscillating sprinklers one does half the garden one does the other half um yeah I you know maybe it's not the best for specific plants but I don't have time to do specific watering of specific beds and these oscillating sprinklers on timers is a lifesaver so I was showing you the pumpkins in my main garden in that bed that I was telling you that really slightly amended and uh, the pumpkins are just not doing well. This is a volunteer pumpkin. This is one plant just from a regular jack-o'-lantern. One plant. This is what they should look like if they have good dirt. Don't know what's going on there. Upset about something. Anyways, yeah, a good healthy pumpkin plant should look like this. One plant. So, yeah, I don't know. Eventually, I'll get the other beds amended properly. This is also a volunteer, and sometimes volunteers do better. There's already, there's some big jack lanterns on here. I'm excited about the green one right next to it. Yeah, there's a bunch of them in here. One plant. It's amazing. So this area, the reason I got a volunteer pumpkin here was this used to be where the pig pen was. And my husband was going to haul the dirt away and I said, oh, leave it there. Leave it there. Let me try to grow things in here. Pig poo. Apparently fantastic. So yeah, volunteer pumpkin. Super happy. And this is another giant Atlantic giant pumpkin plant. Um, this seed came from Holland Seeds and he is down south in Washington. Um, and he's, he's a really fantastic source for uh, help on, you know, growing giant pumpkins and whatnot. But, but yeah, I got this seed from him and this is a super happy plant. But I planted it way, 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 way too late. Probably two months too late and uh, you're really only supposed to let one pumpkin grow and since I planted it so late I was like you know what let's just get some big pumpkins out of it again so I'm growing three there's three and I have some little ones I need to trim off so instead of one this is growing three it is quite a large plant yeah anyways I want some of these leaves this is a nice big leaf to show you. Here's one of the big pumpkins. One leaf. A giant pumpkin plant. <laughs> Gotta love it. Alright, thanks for watching today. Talk to you later. Bye guys.